Hello folks. So the moment when I run this game, it just starts immediately. So the, the, everything starts moving and the player is pretty much free to go straight away. So it would be nice if I had a little menu to start with, like a start game and a quit button. And that's what I'm going to add in right now. And because I've already created this button class, it's actually going to be really straightforward to add more buttons because the hard work is already done. The functionality is there. I can just create as many instances of this as I need. So first what I want to do is load in a couple of pictures. So the first one is my start image. So I'm going to have two buttons or two extra buttons, and these are going to be start and exit. So where I'm loading my images here, I'm just going to load these pictures in for the buttons. So I'll just say pygame.image.load, and it's image forward slash, and this one is start underscore button, PNG. And now let's just copy this down, and I change the start to exit. So exit EMG is the same here, but I just changed that to exit. So it's exit button. So that's the two images loaded. What I can now do is go all the way down to where I'm creating instances of these buttons, Remember, that's on its own, that's not enough. You have to actually create an instance, and that's what creates the buttons themselves. So here, where I'm creating the buttons, I can add a couple more. So I've loaded the images, so I'll just say start button equals. It's an instance of the button class, and then I need to give it an X and a Y coordinate, just like I did before. So this is also going to be screen width divided by 2. Uh, but these buttons are going to be a lot bigger. So I, actually, this is the sizes that I picked from previously when I made the game. So I'll move them over 350 pixels to the left for the first one. And I'm going to put it pretty much bang on in the center of the screen. And then the picture that I need is my start image. So let's copy this down for the exit button. Change that to exit. And then the screen with this one's going to be over to the right hand side. So this actually is going to say plus 150. It's going to be in the middle of the screen and the image is going to be exit. So that's it. That's the buttons created. Uh, but of course, I'm not calling the, the draw methods, so they're not going to be coming up onto the screen first. So let's scroll down into the main game loop. And above here, so I've got my clock and I've got my background being drawn onto the screen. So just above here, because the, these buttons are going to be pretty much the very first thing that is going to be loading within the game, I want to show both of these buttons on the screen. So let's say exit button dot draw. And then I just copy this down and then I say uh, start button dot draw. So if I run this game now, see, I've got the two buttons coming up on the screen. Of course, not very useful because the game is still started. So nothing's happening when I click on them and I can play and I've just got these buttons constantly being drawn in the background. So that's not great. What I actually want is to have uh, another variable, which is going to be a trigger that's going to control whether I'm in the game or whether I'm in the main menu. So before I get this far, I'll go all the way back up to the top where I'm defining my game variable. So this is right at the top of, this, of the code. So I'll define game variables. I've got tile size equals 50, game over equals zero. So let's say main menu equals true. So to start off with, we're going to be in the main menu. That's how the game is going to initialize. So now let's scroll back down to my main game loop. And now I can say with these buttons, I only want them to be shown when the main menu is true. So let's just say if main underscore menu equals true and then I can indent both of these buttons so now they're only going to be showing when the main menu is true which is right at the beginning of the game because that's how I've defined it but then as soon as the main menu is false that's when I want all of the rest of the stuff to be drawn because that's when I have now quit the main menu I've, I've either clicked start or exit and then I want to move on to the next stage of the game so that means that I need to indent pretty much everything else so if main menu is true then we're doing nothing other than drawing these buttons. Else, i.e. main menu is now false, I'm going to be doing everything else. So now I can indent pretty much the rest of this code. So I'll just highlight all of this stuff. So my drawing the world, checking for game over, checking if the players died, up until the event handler. I still want this event handler to be running all the time because this is regardless of whether the game is in the main menu or not. I always want to be able to click that exit button in the top right. Otherwise, the game could hang. So I indent this because this essentially is the game logic. This is the controls of the player moving around and collision and all that kind of stuff. All of this is now indented within this else statement. So it's basically saying that if the main menu is not true, then that means that the game has started so we can run all of this code. So let's run this again and see what happens. Now I don't have a level. I just have my start and exit button. So it looks a lot better now. It's like a proper introduction and a proper main menu. But now if I click, nothing's happening because I haven't coded that in yet. So first of all, let's code in the exit button. That's gonna be really straightforward. If you remember, this whole thing runs on the premise that I have an in, a variable here called run. I set it to true, 
and say in a while run, we execute all of this stuff. And for my event handler, when I click the exit button in the top right, run is set to false, and that's what ends the game. Well, the exit button has the exact same function. That's exactly what I want that to do as well. So if you remember, the way I, I coded these draw methods was that I could actually return a variable from them. So the draw method returns an action, and that action is when the button has been clicked. So it's not enough. I can just draw it onto the screen, but I can also take actions back from it. So I can say if exit button dot draw, and this is remember this is just a kind of a shorthand because essentially what this is saying is if that is true, and that's returning a variable. So I can just get rid of that equals true, and that's kind of implied by just saying if with a colon at the end. So if that's been clicked, then run just becomes false, and then we can quit the game. So let's run this. And if I just click exit, that's it, the game closes down. So that's it, that's all I need to do for the exit button. Now I can do the same thing for the start button. So if the start button has been clicked, well, the only thing I need to change here is my main menu variable. I'm currently in the main menu, but as soon as I click the start button, I'm no longer in the main menu, I want the game to begin. So main menu becomes false. Run this again, uh, exit will still close the game, Start starts the game, and that's it. The buttons are no longer drawn because main menu is now set to false. So this variable is gone. And now the, the game begins proper. And that's pretty much it. That was just a quick introduction and a quick explanation of how we can use these buttons to add a little bit more functionality. So now I can actually separate the main menu from the game. So if you found this useful, then please do leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with these, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.